All right, guys, welcome back to the part two of this Natron tutorial where we are creating a, an animated user interface for like an iPhone. This is the animation that we created in part one of the video. It just sort of, sort of brings in, has a, this animated background, and it's bringing in these different uh, user review elements. And now, um, in part one, we downloaded this uh, image here. It's actually a vector image of an iPhone. And we're, now we're going to bring this vector image into Natron, and then we're going to map this screen so that it's um, relative, so that it kind of fits. We're going to use the corner pin node to fit this uh, flat image here to an angled iPhone screen. So let's go into our downloads and let's find that image uh, or that uh, that file. So if, remember, it was an, Ado an Adobe Illustrator file, and I don't have Illustrator installed. So we're going to have to just open it up in Inkscape, which fortunately Inkscape can do. It can open Illustrator files. So we open up a blank uh, version of Inkscape, a blank project, and we'll just drag and drop this into Inkscape. And it, come, it brings up this uh, import uh, window. We just click OK, leave everything how it is. And now we have this imported, which is great. And so then if we hit Control shift G we can ungroup and see that we also have a group here I'm gonna select the background and just delete it and I'll hit the plus key to zoom in <clears throat> and that's all we're gonna do we're not gonna that's all we're gonna do with this then we'll just save it so make sure it's kind of over our yeah that's fine where it is so we'll hit save as and we'll save it as an Inkscape SVG and we'll call it iPhone. Oh, I already have one earlier, but I'll save over this one, replace it. So now we've saved this over top, and we've called it iPhone. Uh, and now we have this iPhone here on the desktop. So we are going to go back into Natron, and let's read in this iPhone, and I'm just trying to decide where to put it. I guess we'll do another merge right here. We'll add a, a this is our third merge that we brought in. So this will be the background. And then under this A, we want to bring in this, we want to read in the SVG of that iPhone on our desktop, which is right here, iPhone.SVG. <clears throat> and we'll put it into the A pipe of this third node. All right, so now we have a lot going on here. I wish I'd get rid of these warnings. I'm sure I can somehow, but I don't remember how. But it's not going to affect our final output, I don't think. So what I want to do is map this screen here to this phone right here, okay? Um, and actually this screen, we had a transform on it. If you remember, if we hit the D key, it shows the screen down there. So I'm going to select this transform node and hit delete. So we'll just delete, first of all, that transform because we don't really need it to be there now. And then I want to bring this on top. So I guess we need to put our phone in here before. So let's just grab this merge node. I'm going to break those pipes there and we'll merge it in right here instead. Is that going to work? No, let's just do this. How about control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. Um, let's get rid of this merge and let's actually bring the phone in as a third input to this merge node. And then we'll draw. We'll connect to our viewer here. Uh, and then, yeah, so actually what I want to do is have this be a3 kind of, I guess. Perfect. So now it's on top. So essentially, I just wanted to have this be on top, so I had to adjust the pipes accordingly. But now what we want to do is add a corner pin node. And let's take a, take a step back here and see exactly where we want to add in this corner pin. So what we want to do, we want to take this whole merged image and then corner pin it to here. So I think while this first merge is selected, we hit the tab key and just type in corner and we want this corner pin transform so what that'll do is it brings up these different uh, four points on the corner of our image and we can then move it to the corners of the screen and that's going to kind of distort for a second until we get all four of them in place and that's going to move basically that our view to match the view of our screen. So we get it right perfect on. We can zoom in here to make sure we get it perfect. 
And that looks pretty good. We want to get rid of all that blue. We just, we're just going to cover it up completely. And then these corners here we see kind of go a little bit past. There's a little bit of transparency at the top of this. That looks pretty good. Awesome. So now we have our, now our animation will still play, but now it's over top of this phone screen because we use the corner pin tool to reorient this, uh, our, our image and animation of our interface. And then we can do, um, before we get to the viewer, or actually before we get, uh, oh, that's why, that's what we should have done. Because what we really want to do is maybe ha m make this, this come in too. So let's add another merge node, and let's break our shader toy and bring it in to here. Because what I want to do is apply a transform node right here. So I'm going to hit the T key and transform. And what that's going to let us do is actually... I'm going to move this so we know which one we have here. I'll just change it to like 900. So when we move this, it's going to move the whole screen and animation and everything. So what we'll do, we'll go back to, or actually, let's just start here. We'll just slowly animate from left to right a little bit of this screen. So we'll start at frame one, and we'll have it be right here. And then we'll go on this transform five, right click and go to set keyframe all dimensions. And then by frame... Uh, 70, we want it to be over here. And then maybe also let's go back and we can rotate that a little bit too just to give it some extra life. So we'll go set keyframe all and then by frame 70 we'll have it be slightly just rotated a little bit. Sure, up like there is fine. Awesome. So now this is going to play. The phone's moving. It's rotating a little bit. I don't know if I love that rotation actually, but uh, yeah, very cool. Let's render this out, see how it looks. So we're going to go to uh, our image nodes and go to right. We want to create a right node and we'll put it to the desktop and we'll call this phone.mp4 and hit save. That creates a right node, but if we click render right now, we come up with an error because it's not tied in to our animation or to our project. So we want to tie this in to this final merge so that it's seeing the same thing as our viewer. And at this point, even if we break our viewer, it doesn't matter. It'll still render properly. So I'm going to hit, um, let's make sure our project that we're only rendering 100 frames total. So we go down here to our project. Oh, where's our project settings? There's a key, is it P? Or I, you hit it, there's a certain key you can hit to get to the project settings. Okay guys, so I found how to get to our project settings finally. Um, we just go to display and then show project settings and it shows up over here. And uh, I also found out why we couldn't find them, which is because up here in the top left hand, we have our, by default, we're only seeing 10 windows at a time. So I had opened up more than 10, which means I couldn't find it. So if we change this to like 15, then we'll see 15 at a time. You can also change it to like one, then you only see one at a time, whichever one you're clicking on, which is kind of a, a good setting you might want to use in case, you know, you get confused, like there's lots of different transforms, things like that. But anyway, to show the, the things, we just go here and go to show project settings. And the shortcut key I was looking for is S on the keyboard to show project settings. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so now that we're in our project settings, we're going to render this out. I, all I wanted to do here was change this from 250 down to 100 so we don't just render a whole bunch of nothingness. So now that it'll end at, at 100, we can reattach our viewer to see what that'll look like. Um, so that's kind of what our final thing will end up looking like. Go back, it should look like that. We have a little bit of craziness going on at the top. I'm not sure why that's happening, but we'll see if it renders in the final thing or not. What's this down here? Oh, and oh man. So, I, and look, I, I did a, when we did our original render over here, our original animation, I just dragged these off the bottom. But we'll, we should like mask and hide those somehow because now we're seeing them waiting to be queued to come and get animated in. So, um, I should have uh, masked those out. But it's okay for this. Let's just hit render and go to our right node. Go render, and now we'll render this video out and see what it looks like. So it'll take a little bit of time, not too much time though. 
I really like this, these shader toy backgrounds that you can do some really cool stuff. And if we wanted to get even more crazy, we could have applied some filters like some blurs or rotations. We can change this um, or apply like a pattern over top of it. 90% done. And we'll watch our final, final video and see how it looks. So here's our, our output. This is what it looks like. So it didn't get that stuff at the top, which is cool. It was just a glitch in the replay. But we do see down, see, look at the bottom. You'll see the... <laughs> the they animate in from like the screen which is kind of not too great all right but uh that's this um appreciate you watching um i guess i'll just show you real quick since uh i brought up that problem so to get rid of that we need to mask it um and we'll we'll have to mask uh, i'm not going to show it but basically we would create a roto so we would draw before we got to this merge, we come in, we draw a roto, we do a roto, and then we select a, a rectangle, and then we would draw, oh cool, we can, look, it's drawing in this space already, awesome. That's exactly what we do, we just do this exact thing right here. And now if we go back and play, let's see. So they're still there, but we but the, under that roto, did I tie it in? Yeah, I tied it in right there, well, how about that? We just go pre-multiply. Will that do it for us? Now we want to um, mask. Anyway, there's a place we'll put it in. I'll make another video and show you. I'm out of my element on this one, but basically we want to mask out so that we're just seeing those. I think it's on the on the merge. Instead of over, we want to do like a different type of merge. But if we change it here, it's going to mess up the way the way that everything's showing. We have to restructure it. Anyway, that's how we do it. That was with a roto. Change this back to uh, over. But we're, we're drawing the roto, and then we can mask out that on the bottom. So check out another tutorial where I talk about masking uh, if you're curious about doing that, and I will catch you in the next video.